George Stevens, a filmmaker known as a meticulous craftsman with a brilliant eye for composition and a sensitive touch with actors, is one of the great American filmmakers, ranking with John Ford, William Wyler and Howard Hawks as a creator of classic Hollywood cinema, bringing to the screen mytho-poetic worlds that were also mass entertainment. One of the most honored and respected directors in Hollywood history, Stevens enjoyed a great degree of independence from studios, producing most of his own films after coming into his own as a director in the late 1930s. Though his work ranged across all genres, including comedies, musicals and dramas, whatever he did carried the hallmark of his personal vision, which is predicated upon humanism. Although the cinema is an industrial process that makes attributions of authorship difficult if not downright ridiculous, despite the contractual guarantees in Directors Guild of America negotiated contracts, there is no doubt that George Stevens is in control of a George Stevens picture. Though he was unjustly derided by critics of the 1960s for not being an auteur, an auteur he truly is, for a Stevens picture features meticulous attention to detail, the thorough exploitation of a scene's visual possibilities and ingenious and innovative editing that creates many layers of meanings. A Stevens picture contains compelling performances from actors whose interactions have a depth and intimacy rare in motion pictures. A Stevens picture typically is fully engaged with American society and is a chronicled photoplay of the pursuit of the American dream. George Stevens was nominated five times for an Academy Award as Best Director, winning twice, and six of the movies he produced and directed were nominated for Best Picture Oscars. In 1953, he was the recipient of the Irving Thalberg Memorial Award for maintaining a consistent level of high-quality production. He served as president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and AMP. Sciences from 1958 to 1959. Stevens won the Directors Guild of America Best Director Award three times as well as the D.W. Griffith Lifetime Achievement Award. He made five indisputable classics, Swing Time, 1936, a Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers musical, Gunja Din, 1939, a rousing adventure film, Woman of the Year, 1942, a Battle of the Sexes comedy, A Place in the Sunday, 1951 a drama that broke new ground in the use of close-ups and editing, and Shane, 1953, a distillation of every Western cliché that managed to both sum up and transcend the genre. His Penny Serenade, 1941, The Talk of the Town, 1942, The More the Merrier, 1943, I Remember Mama, 1948, and Giant, 1956, all live on in the front rank of motion pictures. George Cooper Stevens was born on December 18, 1904, in Oakland, California, to actor Landers Stevens and his wife, actress Georgie Cooper, who ran their own theatrical company in Oakland, Ye Liberty Playhouse. Cooper herself was the daughter of an actress, Georgia Woodthorpe. Both ladies' Christian names off stage were Georgia, though their stage names were Georgie. Georgie Cooper appeared as Little Lord Fauntleroy as a child along with her mother at Los Angeles Burbank Theater. George's parents' company performed in the San Francisco Bay Area, and as individual performers they also toured the West Coast as vaudevillians on the Ophium circuit. Their theatrical repertoire included the classics, giving the young George the chance to forge an understanding of dramatic structure and what works with an audience. In 1922 Stevens' parents abandoned live theater and moved their family, which consisted of George and his older brother John Landers Stevens later to be known as Jack Stevens, south to Glendale, California, to find work in the movie industry. Both of Stevens' parents gained steady employment as movie actors. Landers appeared in Little Caesar, 1931, The Public Enemy, 1931, and Citizen Kane, 1941, in small parts. His brother was Chicago Herald American drama critic Ashton Stevens, 1872-1951 who was hired by William Randolph Hearst for his San Francisco Examiner after Ashton had taught him how to play the banjo. An interviewer of movie stars and a notable man about town, Ashton mentored the young Orson Welles, who based the Jedediah Leland character in Citizen Kane, 1941, on him. Georgie Cooper's sister Olive Cooper became a screenwriter after a short stint as an actress. Jack became a movie cameraman, as did their second son. Stevens' movie adaptation of I Remember Mama, 
The Chronicle of a Norwegian Immigrant Family Trying to Assimilate in San Francisco circa 1910 could be a mirror on the Stevens family's own move to Los Angeles circa 1922. In Mama, the members of the Hansen family feel like outsiders, a theme that resonates throughout Stevens' work. Acting was considered an insalubrious profession before the rise of Ronald Reagan's generation of actors into the halls of power, and being a member of an acting family necessarily marked one as an outsider in the first half of the 20th century. Young George had to drop out of high school to drive his father to his acting auditions, which would have further enhanced his sense of being an outsider. To compensate for his lack of formal education, Stevens closely studied theater, literature and the emerging medium of the motion picture. Soon after arriving in Hollywood, the 17-year-old Stevens got a job at the Hal Roach Studios as an assistant cameraman. It was a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Of that period, when the cinema was young, Stevens reminisced, there were no unions, so it was possible to become an assistant cameraman if you happened to find out just when they were starting a picture. There was no organization. If a cameraman didn't have an assistant, he didn't know where to find one. As part of Hal Roach's company, Stevens learned the art of visual storytelling while the former